Am I the asshole for airing the mother of my grandchildren's dirty laundry in public? My son Tommy passed away suddenly six years ago. He was recently divorced with two kids with his ex-wife. The kids were five and six years old at the time of their dad's passing. The kids and Tommy lived with us for a year at one point. Tommy's ex, Marla, was serving time. Ooh, Marla. She stole from Tommy, a friend of his, and from my husband and myself. It delayed the divorce, so they had been separated for more than two years. The separation started when Tommy learned Marla had cheated. Damn, Marla. Damn, girl. We found out about the stealing afterwards, and she stole from us after the separation. All in all, Marla stole close to $35,000 between all of us. Marla has recently been released and started back 50-50 custody of the kids when Tommy passed away. After Tommy passed away, Marla attempted to cut our family out of the lives of my grandchildren. My husband and I went to court and we were awarded very generous grandparents visitations under grandparents' rights in our state. Marla was furious. She tried to appeal it, but was rejected twice. The relationship between us was not civil, so we kept it simple and we only communicated times for pickup. Dates were already specified. Marla remarried and now has additional children. Marla has asked a few times for us to include her other children. Marla, go touch some fucking grass. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You literally stole from these people, tried to have their grandchildren cut out of their lives because you're a terrible person. And now that you're remarried and popped out more babies, you want us to include your other children? Ma'am, no, we're not going to do that. Y'all not the asshole. I don't, I don't even know what. No, hell no, you're not the asshole because this bitch is fucking crazy. No, Marla has asked a few times for us to include her other children. We ignore the request. She's yelled at us when we pick up our grandchildren and doesn't care if they hear. We stay silent generally. My husband and myself have no wish to be a part of her other children's lives or to play any sort of role in her and her current husband's life. We have a relationship with our grandkids. They're close to us as we are to them. They never ask to include their half siblings. So we keep things the way they are. That's very good. I, I love it. I fucking love it. I love it. I'm here for it. I'll Last week, my grandson had a school talent show that they wanted us to attend, so we did. Marla and her husband were there with their kids, but we sat apart. When the kids finished and went back to the classrooms, and as we were leaving, Marla approached me and asked us to please think of her other kids and to start acting like grandparents to them. No, you do not get to burn bridges and then come back and be like, well, they're just kids. I don't give a fuck. You should have thought about that before you stole from me. Before you cheated on my son, before you tried to cut me out of my grandchildren's lives, you should have fucking thought about the fact that maybe somewhere down the line, I may have something that you want, something that you need. Nah, bitch, you should have thought about that. I'm not thinking of your kids and I'm not going to act as shit for them because I'm not anything to these kids. We stayed civil and refused. Marla called us monsters. She said we were hideous monsters for turning our backs on her and her other kids just because she moved on after Tommy. Bitch, delusion is the name. Delusion. If delusional was a motherfucking person, we'd see a photo of Marla. Because are you fucking kidding me? You're turning your backs on me and my other kids because I moved on. No, no. No, no, bitch. We turned our back on you because you stole from us. You cheated on my son. You're not a part of my family anymore. I will not recognize you as family because family doesn't do shit like that to each other. Bitch, this ain't got shit to do with you moving on. Like, girl, delusional. The word of the day, kids, fucking delusional. She accused us of cruelty to children. She was very loud. I lost my temper and I told her if she wanted us in her life, she wouldn't have cheated on our son and stolen from him, his friend, and us and ended up going to prison. I told her we owe her nothing. We owe her children nothing. And she needs to accept that our grandkids will always be our grandkids. But she was no longer a part of our family. Marla reacted to others hearing this and told me I had no right to air her dirty laundry in public. That I should have kept that out of our mutual dispute. Am I the asshole? So you mean to tell me that it's okay for her to talk smack? All right, my attack dragon's going off. The moment that this bitch decided to get loud and start screaming and yelling and shit was the moment you were no longer the asshole for saying whatever the fuck you said. Because bitch, when you get loud, I can get loud too. 
It's just that my loudness rings true. You over here spitting out lies from your asshole. My, my loud is all facts. It's all fucking facts. And if you didn't want people to know that you were a shit person, don't do shit things. No, nah, y'all not the asshole. You're not the asshole. And I love the way this played out for you. I absolutely love it because I'm almost positive that her now husband don't know that she cheated on her past husband. I know he don't. Well, he know now, but he did. He didn't know before. I know he didn't. My last question is how does her husband feel about her trying to force these people to be her kids' grandparents? What if his parents are still here? What if his parents are still here and active in his kid's life and this bitch is over here creating problems where there are none because she wants two random people to be grandparents to kids that are not related to them. I wonder how bro feels. I need his POV. I need him to reach out. Will I be the asshole for not attending my best friend's wedding? Disclaimer, this is not my story. My female 27 best friend, female 27, is getting married in February. She's been planning her wedding for two years and I've been helping her as her maid of honor. I found out I was pregnant at the beginning of October and I'm due towards the end of June. This is my first baby and I've struggled with heavy fertility issues. When her wedding comes, I'll be in my second trimester. I told my best friend last week and she seemed upset. She wasn't too happy that I was pregnant and her first question was if I would fit my bridesmaid dress. The dress is flowy and I told her that I should be fine and if not, I'll cover the cost of any alterations or buying another dress. But that was her first question, not even a congratulations. I tried to shrug it off and just assume she was stressed. Her bachelorette party is next month and I've been planning it, so I just reached out to her with finer details to confirm everything. During the phone call, she tried to make me feel bad that I wouldn't be drinking with the rest of them and that it wouldn't be the bachelorette party of her dreams. Will I be the asshole for not attending my best friend's wedding? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I told her the party would still be fun. What she said did upset me, but I just shrugged it off again. Today she called me and told me she had a hard decision to make, but she's thinking about it, and while she would like to keep me as a maid of honor, she doesn't want me in her pictures. She said my bump would be too distracting, and she didn't want her pictures to turn into a maternity shoot, and that she just didn't feel comfortable with it. But she still wanted me to pay for the bachelorette party, help her plan the wedding, and wanted me to do almost everything maid of honor except be in the pictures, and she was debating if she still wanted me to give a speech. She then sent me a bunch of bag-like dresses to choose from as my new dress since I won't need my maid of honor dress. We've been best friends since we were 10. I would have never in my wildest dreams expected her to act this way. I really don't feel like paying for or being supportive of a person who treats me like a disposable mooch after years of fertility issues. But I also feel like maybe I'm overreacting as some of my friends said that I would look weird in the pictures. So will I be the asshole? Am I the asshole for canceling the entire vacation when I found out that my stepdaughters deliberately hid my daughter's passport to get her to stay home? I've been married to my wife, Beth, for five years. I have a bio daughter named Jessica, she's 18, and I also have two stepdaughters named Monica and Leah. They're both 25 and 28, oh, so a lot older. Both are single moms and live with us currently. Damn. There's been issues about my stepdaughters asking my daughter to babysit the kids. Jessica didn't have a problem with it at first since this is what she does to earn money, but since her stepsisters don't pay her much, she just refused to babysit. We worked this out by having my wife take care of paying for the babysitting. I planned a family vacation for three days and everyone wanted to go. However, both Monica and Leah suggested that Jessica stay home and watch the kids since Beth doesn't want her grandkids to come. They said it's because the kids are used to Jessica and hiring another babysitter would cause issues and also said that Jessica isn't too fond of our destination, but it was obvious that Jessica wanted to go. They insisted and Beth offered to pay her double and there was just a lot of back and forth on this till I demanded that they stop bringing it up. We were supposed to go last week, but when everybody had packed their bags and it was time to go, Jessica found that she didn't have her passport on her. We searched her bag, then went home and searched there. Beth and my stepdaughters kept insisting that we go back to the airport or else we'd miss our flight. They insisted that Jessica stay at home with the kids. They even told the new babysitter to go home because she was no longer needed. I refused to go and kept searching for the passport till Monica admitted that she helped Leah hide Jessica's passport to get her to stay home with the kids. Are you kidding me? I was livid. I tried to get her to tell me where it was, but she said that Leah had it. Leah denied, so I threatened to cancel the vacation. That's when they gave it back. 
I decided to actually cancel the vacation and blew up at both of them and berated them. Man, you know what? You should have just gone with your daughter and left everybody else at home. They can stay with their kids and you can go with your daughter because you booked the trip and you guys deserve a vacation after that. They stayed upstairs for a while and Beth refused to speak to me and said that I had punished my stepdaughters for worrying about their kids and wanting them to stay with someone they knew. I got told I overreacted and ruined the trip for everybody. That is insane. Am I the asshole? Asshole for canceling a check of twelve thousand dollars that I wrote for my infertile friend for her IVF over a joke. Disclaimer: This is not my story. I, female, thirty-five, am infertile. My ex-husband and I tried everything to have kids, but it just never happened. He divorced me, went and married someone younger who was able to give him a kid, and from what I've heard, they're expecting their second child together. It hurt so much seeing someone else have what I couldn't. I get frustrated with myself sometimes and with family blaming me for basically everything. I turn on my friends for support, especially Alicia. She's in the same infertile boat as me, but currently her and her husband are trying IVF, hoping it will work. Alicia asked me for help to pay for her upcoming IVF cycle. I agreed to write her a check of $12,000. I really wanted to help her and the money came with no strings attached. I wrote the check and gave it to her last week. She was very appreciative of it. The very next day, I got a sudden message from a mutual friend, Carol, with a screenshot of a conversation she had with Alicia. Turns out she and Alicia were talking about the next IVF cycle. Am I the asshole for canceling a check of $12,000 that I wrote for my infertile friend for her IVF over a joke? Disclaimer, this is not my story. Carol and Alicia were talking about the next IVF cycle and Alicia said she hoped the cycle would work because she didn't want to end up divorced and having her husband go marry someone younger and have a baby with them and another on the way while she's alone at home without a family at 35. Alicia is 32. I was stunned and hurt. I knew she was talking about me. I didn't confront her about it. I simply contacted my bank and canceled the check. That afternoon, Alicia called me to ask why I canceled the check and I told her. She went crazy saying she didn't mean it that way and she thought that it was somewhat an inside joke between desperate and fertile women. She came over with her husband the next day begging I write another check but I refused. An argument started her husband thought I wasn't being supportive of her like when she was supporting me through my struggles. She left crying and we haven't talked since. Her husband keeps reminding me of the date of the next cycle saying they can't have it after I took the money that was supposed to pay for it back. Some friends think I'm being oversensitive but Carol's on my side. Am I the asshole for telling my wife to never volunteer me to help her family again? My wife, 38 female, and I, 39 male, have been married for eight years, and we have a four-year-old son. My wife's younger brother, Joe, and his girlfriend are moving into an apartment together at the beginning of June. But the girlfriend's lease is up at the end of April, so she needed to move out of her place. Joe currently lives in a studio apartment, so he doesn't have enough room for all of her stuff. They decided that they're going to move all of her stuff into a storage unit for a month until they get their new place. A little over a month ago, Joe had asked my wife if we would be able to help them move his girlfriend's stuff and she agreed. My mother-in-law was supposed to watch our son so we could both help, but she felt ill and had to cancel. My wife suggested trying to get a babysitter for that day, but I didn't want to spend hundreds on a babysitter to help someone move. That's dumb and bringing a four-year-old with us would not be helpful to anyone. This turned into an argument between us because she said I should help them move while she watches our son because I'm stronger than she is and I know how to drive our truck with the trailer. I did not volunteer to do this. I didn't want to do this in the first place. You told them that I would be able to do this. So now that you backing out, why do I have to do it? You know what? All right. All right. We're going to help. We're going to help. There's a little brother. We're going to help. I told my wife that she should help them and have them rent a U-Haul for the day. We compromised by telling Joe that I would help them, but they would need to get a U-Haul instead of using our truck and trailer. Then, the morning of the move, this past Saturday, my wife told me that a friend of hers got sweet tickets through work to a hockey game for the day and invited them. Okay, bitch, so now not only are you not helping move your brother and his girlfriend, you're going to a hockey game. While I help your brother and his girlfriend move. That's fucked up. You the one who agreed to help them move in the first place. That's mean. Bro, I see why you're upset. Yes, they got sweet tickets to a playoff hockey game. She said she would be bringing our son since her friend was bringing her kids too. Great. So not only do I get stuck helping someone move, but my wife and son get to go and have an amazing experience together that I'm missing out on. And yes... This was my son's first major sporting event, and I was missing it. That's fucked up. 
Your wife never once thought maybe you would want to go to this too. That's fucked up. That, that's, that's a little fucked up. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Joe never got the U-Haul and his girlfriend wasn't even close to packed up and ready when I got there. I would have left. And that's when you should have left. It looks like y'all not done here and I'm only here to help move. Call me when you're done packing. I wouldn't have stayed there. Bro, hell no. You, I hope you left. Did you leave? I spent seven to eight hours and multiple trips back and forth helping them move. All the while, my wife is sending pictures to our family group chat of how much fun they're having at the hockey game. When everyone was home that night, my wife was surprised that I wasn't in a good mood. She said that I acted like I barely cared when our son was telling us about the hockey game and how much fun it was. I asked her if she was seriously confused about why I was upset. She told me to tell her. So I started railing off all the reasons I had to be pissed off. She volunteered me to help. She got to spend the day doing something very special with our son that I missed out on. Her brother and his girlfriend were not prepared and I had spent the entire day doing manual labor. I ended my little rant by telling her she's never going to volunteer me to help her family ever again. She told me I was overreacting and I can't hold it against her that her friend invited them to the game. She also said I'm not being fair by blaming her for Joe and his girlfriend. I don't think you're the asshole at all because me personally, I would be pissed off too. I would be pissed the fuck off if I was basically volunteered. My, my wife's brother asked her if we could help. She said yes. Not asking you. Didn't talk to you about it. She said yes that you guys were going to help. But then shit happens and now it's down to you're the only person that's helping and she's out having a grand old good time sending fucking pictures and you're expected to be happy about it. Bro, I didn't want to do this in the first fucking place. You knew I didn't want to fucking do this because I tried to tell you that you should go and help your brother and his fucking girlfriend. But no, it was me because I'm stronger and I can fucking drive. And even then, they weren't fucking prepared. I spent all goddamn day with your brother and his girlfriend helping pack shit, which I wouldn't have done. Helping them pack shit as well as making multiple trips back and forth to the fucking storage. Ma'am, are you kidding me? Could you be any more selfish? Your wife knows that she was wrong. I truly feel like she knows that she was wrong because you told her that you were upset from doing manual labor all fucking day. That her brother and his girlfriend were not fucking ready. You told her. You literally listed all of this shit that made you upset all goddamn fucking day. Never once did you say, I'm upset that your friend invited you and our son to go to hockey. Never once did you say that, but immediately in her defense, you're just upset at me because my friend invited us to go somewhere and don't blame me for my brother and his girlfriend not being ready. Bitch, who voluntold me? Because that's what the fuck she did. She voluntold you to fucking help them move. Bitch, I'm blaming you. No one else is getting the blame but fucking you. You agreed to do this shit and you're the one person that didn't fucking do it. And to top it off, homie missed one of his sons first. Like, I know he's upset about that. I know that he's bothered by it. I would be. Am I the asshole for not letting my miracle baby niece be the flower girl at my wedding? My 27 female older brother and sister-in-law, both mid-30s, just welcomed their first child a year and a half ago after years of trying. After many failed attempts, sister-in-law was told that she wouldn't be able to conceive due to a medical condition she has, and they finally got pregnant. Pretty good. Since having my niece, the baby has been the center of attention at every family event we've had since she was born. Birthdays, weddings, family get-togethers, you name it. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my niece, but it can get to be a little too much when my sister-in-law goes on and on about how long they tried to conceive, complications they've had, miscarriages they've had, etc. Like a little too much info. Many family members have commented on how it's a little bit excessive, but no one has said anything because they don't want to sound like an asshole. Anyway, I'm getting married in the spring and my brother and sister-in-law approached me last weekend about having my niece to be the flower girl. Now my fiance, 35 male, has two children, 10 male and six female from his previous marriage. His son is one of his groomsmen, while his daughter has asked to be our flower girl when we told them the news that we were getting married a year ago, as it's something she always wanted to do, so of course we said yes. So I explained this to my sister-in-law when she asked me about my niece. She asked if my stepdaughter can just carry my niece with her. I said I don't think she'd be comfortable with that considering she's six. 
She then asked why I can't give the role to my niece and allow herself to carry my niece down as the flower girl. I said no because I already promised my stepdaughter. She then started going off about how my lack of effort to incorporate my niece is disgusting to her. I should honor her in some way since I know how long and hard they tried for my niece. Now, I may sound like an asshole for this, but I got kind of fed up and snapped and said, incorporate my niece, how? By the time the wedding comes around, she'll be two years old. The entire family already knows your story about how long and how hard you guys tried for her. What more do you expect for me to do to honor her? She started crying and said that I clearly don't love my one and only niece and I'm letting her down. I said, of course I love my niece and obviously she is going to be involved in the pictures and stuff, but I'm not going to let down my stepdaughter by giving my niece a role she's too young to remember anyway. Well, now my sister-in-law and brother are pissed off at me for not letting my niece be the flower girl and are running around telling the rest of the family I don't love my niece. That's a bit of an overreaction. My mom had been trying to stay neutral, but thinks my stepdaughter would understand if I explained to her I need to give that role to my niece. No, I'm firm in my decision though, and my fiance is thankful that I didn't let his daughter down. Yeah, am I the asshole for not allowing my niece to be the flower girl? Once when I was playing Among Us, I went to put in a code to play with friends, and then random words came up in the code thing. I'll admit, I was freaked out, so I started to say words back, and we've actually been talking for a while now. Turns out, my hacker is nice. Alright, this one's, uh, we have a unique perspective on. Interesting, okay. Yeah. Am I the asshole for telling my super rich friend she is unbearable to hang out with? Ooh, okay. Yeah. Are we the super rich friend? Is that our unique perspective? No. Okay. We're not rich. But <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah. yeah. I had a fucking cup of ramen noodle for lunch <laughs> right before this. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I mean, it is really self-explanatory, but I'll give some details. My bestie since childhood, let's call her Jenny, has her finances secured. She, 35-year-old, built and made an exit from an from a business making her insanely rich. She comes from a very humble background, and I can confidently say that she has earned it by working for it. Okay. I come from a pretty average background and have a pretty average job today, and so do most of our friends. I don't miss anything, uh, and I do have savings. I can go on trips, etc. Her story is a fairy tale, and we are all super proud of her, but a couple of years ago, she was approached by an agency that pushed her to become a public motivational speaker Ooh. and podcaster. Oh, okay. So that's all right. Interesting. Since then, she has become increasingly unbearable to be around, and I eventually came to the point where I needed to tell her. Fuck. Fuck. I'm offended. I'm so offended right now. They're coming for us, Sarah. They're coming for us humble podcasters. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I want to say for the record, I'm joking because I'm willing to bet this is a completely different case. Because if this is a motivational speaker, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm also like, listen, that's fired. Let's the podcasting be, let's community be, let's today. Be fucking, let's be fucking real. There's some podcasts I find annoying. I'm not oh, going to yeah. stand up for all podcasts. No, yeah, there's absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I'm willing to bet this this motherfucker is annoying as hell for sure. Uh, since Jenny got rich, she has always been herself. Just in a more fancy package, and I have loved that for her. You go, girl. She has always been super respectful about other people's finances, and when we meet up, she's always up for whatever the rest of us can afford with. Even on her bachelorette party, she made a, a deal about making sure to do things everyone could afford. When pursuing her journey as a motivational speaker and podcaster, I had to revisit everything I thought about her. All of her motivational tips were related to not wanting to be an average person, Oh. And that anyone can become just as rich as her if they weren't lazy. So, okay, wait. So this is also kind of like a griftery kind of thing then. If, like, in person she's, like, normal and, like, being respectful about the wealth that other people have. But, but then, then you're going on your fucking ridiculous podcast. Yes. And you're just being a huge asshole. Like, Doug, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. And you can be just like me. Yeah. In one episode, she talks about making sure to surround oneself with successful people to avoid looking at average people as a <sighs> quote-unquote acceptable norm. <laughs> she even Don't look at fucking normies. <laughs> They're poor. 
You want rich, good, successful, good-looking people <laughs> like me. She even went as far as describing another friend's husband as her nightmare partner as he quote-unquote lacks ambition. She didn't mention him by name, but other details that made it, made us able to identify him. Over time, this worsened, and eventually other friends stopped inviting her to things. Now the podcast took another turn, and she started to talk about how to handle when people turn your back on you for becoming successful and how, quote-unquote, <sighs> lonely it is at the top. What top? I don't know. I've never heard of this woman. <laughs> like, who is she? What yeah, are like, what are you talking? Because, like... A top podcaster. What, what money is this fucker making? Joe Rogan. Yeah, like, come on. There's, yeah, there's, like, you're yeah. not a fucking... Oh, this is this story pissing me off. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it also, um, oh god, I I have a lot of thoughts. I know. I have too many thoughts, and okay. there, some of them are conflicting, but most of them are like, fuck this person. Yeah. I but decided it was time to tell her that she's losing grip of reality, and that if she continues with being so judgmental in her podcast, she will end up just as lonely as she describes herself to be. Jenny got super pissed at me and told me she wouldn't expect this from her best friend, and claims I have been jealous and felt inferior to her my whole whole life which is absolutely not true she tells me the whole podcast thing is her playing a part and that she exaggerates her opinions for reach she thinks i am the one who has convinced all the others to leave her side and wants me to apologize before ever speaking to me again help me here am i the asshole should i apologize and i think yes you're the asshole because this is what happens when you start a podcast <laughs> this is the natural progression of things when you start a podcast, everyone who starts a podcast is a little evil on the inside. They start it, and then you get 10 followers, and you get a big fucking ego, you fucking and you burn ego. all your bridges with all your friends. That is... That's how it is. That's how it is. And you that's gotta how mafia apologize. Is. That's how mafia work in the podcasting industry. No, I'm joking. No, yeah, this is a big bit. Yeah. Obviously um, not yeah, the no. asshole. Okay. She's that's a bitch. Mean, yeah, fuck her. She sucks. Am I the asshole for wearing a wedding dress at a wedding? So my friend, 20 female, and I, 19 male, have been friends for a few years and she recently got engaged. A week ago, I got a DM from her for a small costume party that she was hosting as a celebration for her getting engaged. I asked if there was a theme and she said there wasn't. I'm a cosplayer, so I had a lot of choices. I didn't want to rock up in an anime cosplay, so I thought it would be funny to go to an engagement party as the corpse bride. Okay. I arrived at her house yesterday and everything seemed normal. A few people complimented my costume and I was having a lot of fun. After 10 minutes, my friend's fiance walked out in a black tuxedo and announced that it was actually their wedding. Oh no. <laughs> Apparently my friend saw a video of someone doing this and wanted to do the same. He asked us all to go to the backyard for the ceremony to begin. I went straight to him. I asked him if I should go home and change my outfit and that I would get back before it started. He told me it was fine since I didn't know it was the wedding. I trusted him and followed everyone outside. They got married and everything seemed good. The reception was just in their house again, so everyone just walked back inside and picked up where they left off. I tried talking to my friend and celebrating with her, but she kept making excuses not to talk to me. I assumed it was just because she was tired from the big day and wanted some time alone. I didn't bother her after that and the party soon ended. I got home and an hour and a half passed when my phone started getting notifications. I checked and it was my friend texting me. She was cussing me out and telling me how I ruined her wedding. I was really confused and asked what I did. The, that only made her more angry. She told me it was basic knowledge to not wear a wedding dress to a wedding. I reminded her that I had no idea it was a wedding and that I asked her now husband if I should change and he said it was fine. She didn't respond but I got a text from her husband. He asked why I would tell her he said it was fine. I told him he said it was fine. Then he said how I should have changed anyways, and it's my fault that the two are now fighting over this. Oh man. I've tried texting her that I was sorry and that if I had known, I wouldn't have done it. I woke up today and saw her and her husband have blocked me on everything. So am I the asshole for not changing out of the wedding dress when I found out it was actually a wedding? 
He had prescribed me some medication, but once I got out, I had realized that the medication wasn't helping me, but making me worse. I ended up downing my medication, and my mother and brother held me down as they made me throw it up. Fast forward six months, I was staying with my great-grandmother, and I had found that my other grandmother had just died. I thought I was okay until I went to the funeral, and I felt completely empty. I had also heard from my family members that my dad had disappeared for a whole month, only to find out he was homeless and put himself into a psych ward. Once he got out, we talked about how it was just hard to adjust to reality after getting out of the hospital. I found out he had a girlfriend and one day he got into a fight with his girlfriend. It should be known that my grandmother, his mom, adored the girlfriend and somehow blamed my mom for their fight. She insulted my mother in a group chat and I had called her out. At this time, my great grandmother, who I was staying with, had taken my newly prescribed medication because I didn't really need it.